the spike car alarm system does have passive keyless entry, which has always been one of my favorite features on any car alarm. But if that feature's not for you, you can just lock it by shaking the phone. And then just shake the phone again to unlock it. Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, hello and welcome to my channel. I hope you like today's video. If you like smart home and automotive technology content, then hit that subscribe button because most of the time that is what you're going to see on this channel. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing and installing this passive keyless entry car security system from a company called Spy Auto Security. I think this company have been around for quite some time now, but I personally have never installed any of their products before. Um, after doing a little bit of research, I discovered that this company actually makes some really cool products. In fact, they have quite a few other products that I would be very interested in installing in the future. Okay, I'm going to start off by opening up this beautiful looking box that the system has been presented in. That is a good looking box. Okay. This table is quite small, so I'm just going to lift everything out so we can get rid of the box out of the way. Put that over there. That's it. Yep. Move that box out of the way. Okay. Let's start off with the wiring looms. That's for the main interface and the auto start interface. We've got a relay and a relay socket. Uh, another wiring loom that'll be for the shock sensor. This is the aerial for the paging system. A little switch, reset switch, valet switch for whatever it may be for. And a micro USB cable. Yeah, micro USB. And we've got the main siren for the car, for the system, sorry. Here we've got the instruction manual and installation manual. And this is a support operation guide. And now the system itself. Here we have the main interface with this attached to it as well. That's not a button, I think this is for the um, deterrent LED. So when you, the system's armed, it flashes. Actually, uh, I remember seeing in the instructions there might be a Bluetooth module built into that part as well. So that's the main interface. Quality looks good. Um, here we've got a simple little shock sensor. So if the car is tampered with in any way and it creates any vibration that's going to send a signal to the alarm unit and notify us there's a problem. That's a piece of double sided tape to stick it on if you need it. Here we've got the engine start button. I'm not too sure if I'll be installing that side of the system but eh, I might do. And finally, we've got these two here. That's it. Yeah. Which are our paging remotes. It's a pretty solid looking design remote as well. It's got the three buttons on the side there. Okay. Okay, so this system I am reviewing and installing today is called the SPY LC095A1-APP two-way car alarm system. It cost me $100 plus shipping and it is jam-packed with lots of exciting features. Plus it can also be upgraded with more features as well. With this particular system, um, you can plug an additional headlight control module into this side. Um, and on the side here for the engine start module, that actually unplugs as well. So you can just be left with like a smaller interface if you did not want to use that part of the alarm, um, that part of the system. 
Uh, this system obviously has its own separate remote pages, but it's also app controlled as well and works with Android and iPhone. It is PKE, which stands for Passive Keyless Entry. So providing you have your phone in your pocket or bag, your car will lock and unlock for you automatically when you walk away or come near it. It also will lock and unlock by shaking your phone. If you follow this channel, you would have seen this feature and the PKE feature before in my G-Auden car security alarm installation video. Prior to doing this review, I actually already had a quick look through the box and the quality of everything looked really good to me. So I then wondered about the actual build quality of the system. So I ended up pulling it apart and I took a look inside and oh my god, the build quality of this product is quite impressive indeed. I've been in the automotive electronics field for years and I don't think I've seen high build quality like this before on a car alarm system. They are using high quality components inside and it's all been soldered with what looks to be a good quality solder and paste. And these days that is becoming rare to see. The system is designed for vehicles that work on a 12 volt system. Um, it will not work with 24 volt systems at all. The remote pages are, work, op operate on a 433 megahertz frequency and they are long range of course for the paging system. And one really cool thing about them is they are rechargeable. Yep. All you do is use the supplied micro USB cable to charge your remotes up. You don't need to replace the batteries in them at all. I think that's a great feature. Okay guys, it's going to be easier to get this installed to explain and test out all the other features. And that's a lot of work to do. So let's get started with the installation. I should just quickly add, if you're thinking about buying this product and you have no auto electrical experience at all, or you do have a little bit of experience but have never installed a car alarm system before, then I do not recommend trying to install this by yourself. Take your car to a professional installer as this is a reasonably complex job and is definitely not for the beginner or amateur at all. To begin the installation I need to remove all these panels again so I can get access to all the wires which I've done a million times before. Um, as I said before if you do follow this channel um, you would have seen that I installed a very similar system to this uh, probably I don't know it's probably like about um, six weeks ago now I'd say um, and that was the G Auden system. Um, again it was passive keyless entry um, as you can see here on the screen. This, is, this system is still currently installed on my um, car. Um, and it's been working great. You can lock it by the app. Um, it's got, again, as I just said, the PKE feature, so you just walk away from it and it locks. And you can also lock and unlock it by shaking the phone as well. Um, I'm not uh, installing this new spy system to get rid of the system because I don't like it. Um, I just saw this system online, saw a few people talking about it online, and I thought, oh, I've never actually installed one of those before. Um, so I decided just to give it a go. Right, let's start the installation. Okay, all the panels are removed. I can get access to all the wires now. First step is to find somewhere to mount the interface. Uh, now compared to the G Auden system, which I've got installed at the moment, which is just up here, um, as you can see, the size of the interface is considerably larger of the SPY. Um, but then, of course, the um, number of features it's got is more than the G Auden one as well. Um, obviously I'm going to remove the G Auden system as you can't run two systems at once. Um, I will leave the wiring loom still there, um, just in case I don't like the SPI system I can just plug my uh, G Auden system back in again and can carry on using that. Um, so the, yeah, but the biggest problem for now is where to actually mount this. So let's start removing the old system and see if we can make some room for it. Okay, the uh, G Auden system has been removed. I've left the wiring in there. Um, as I said before, if I don't like the spy system, I can just uh, go back to using the system. Um, as you can see up there, up here, the um, spy system is mounted. Um, it's a tight fit, but I managed to get it in there. So now it's just wiring the system up. And there's a lot of work there to do. Okay guys, and as you can probably see, most of the wiring is now done. 
um, I've decided to not install the remote start um, for several reasons um, you know, it, it, as I said before you can just actually unplug that part of the interface off the main interface so that's what I've done uh, yeah so I'm not installing that for several reasons one um, in the past when I've installed that feature on my own cars I ended up not really using it anyway two this is a Volkswagen Caddy van so the clutch has got to be pressed in for the car to be able to start anyway and three um, it's got a transponder key um, I thought I had a bypass module in stock to get around that because that's what you need to use when you've got like a transponder system in the car um, but it turns out I don't um, obviously the clutch is no problem to get around um, but yeah basically the main feature the main reason is just because in the past when I've had it installed on my own vehicles I've never really used it anyway um, I might change my mind at a later date that can always be um, that can always be done at a later date if I decide I want to do that so now all that's left to do is mount the shock sensor uh, mount the valet switch mount the aerial for the pager system and mount the deterrent LED um, as I said at the beginning of the video um, I think this has the uh, Bluetooth module built into it as well and as it turns out it does so if you don't have that connected you won't be able to connect it with the um, app on your phone um, so that is it, is it is also the turn LED but it does have a Bluetooth module installed inside of it as well um, I think that's pretty much it yep just in, just mount all those parts then put the car back together this car is like literally in a million pieces at the moment the hardest part about trying uh, one of the hardest things about installing car alarms is trying to find the wires when you don't have diagrams and stuff like that um, it can be a bit of a nightmare and very very time consuming to do so yeah I'm going to mount all these parts put the car back together tidy all the wiring up a bit more mount the interface back up behind the dash again and then it's ready for testing out okay guys and the installation is now basically finished so we've got the interface mounted back up here it's a lot smaller in size now because I took the uh, remote start um, module off the side of it because at this stage I don't want to uh, install that part we've got the uh, shock sensor mounted up here and the learning reset switch mounted just here um, that's only used if you want to code uh, new remotes to the system or the system malfunctions we've got the deterrent LED mounted up here and as I said before that's also the Bluetooth module so you can use it with the app and lastly the pager antenna which is mounted up here in the middle of the windscreen okay I'm now going to test and demonstrate just some of the basic features that this alarm system has uh, using the app and the pager remote here uh, the name of the app by the way is called eSpy um, and that can be downloaded from the Google Play Store or the App Store okay to lock the car there's four ways you can do it one way is by pressing the lock button which is this button down here on the pager remote like this or you can tap the lock button in the app or if you shake your phone once that will lock the car as well or if you just close the door and walk away from the car the car will automatically lock for you To unlock the car we just press the unlock button on the pager remote here or press the unlock button in the app or by shaking your phone again one time it will unlock for you or of course as soon as you start walking back to the car the car just automatically unlocks for you The distance in which the passive keyless entry system operates is adjustable. Um, you can do that using the slider bar at the top here. As you can see that is adjustable from 0 to 10 meters. Uh, and if you do want to use this feature, and it does need to be enabled first, just like the shake the phone feature, and that is also adjustable in three levels as well. Opening the boot or trunk can also be done using the app. And to do that, you just press this button down here, and it will ask you for confirmation before it does it. Or it can also be opened by holding this button here down for three seconds.
It does have a built-in car finder feature as well. Um, if you're using the pager remote, you can just press that middle button one time like this. And the lights will start flashing on the car. Or of course the app can be used as well by just tapping on this middle button here. When the system is armed and you're away from the car, if the car is interfered with in any way, such as a window is smashed and the door is opened, someone hits the car or someone's inside the car and they touch the brake pedal, you'll be notified of this on the pager remote. And to test this, I'll just bang the steering wheel to set off the shock sensor. If you are not far from the car, and still connected to the car by Bluetooth, then the app will notify you of this as well. Another feature with the app is that when you open the door, the app actually displays that one of the doors has been opened. And while your door is open, the all-round flashes will flash, and it will do this for approximately 20 seconds. After a few seconds of the ignition being on, if you touch the brake pedal, the car will lock. To unlock car, just turn the ignition off. At night time when it's dark, if you can't see the uh, pager remote screen, then you can turn on the backlight, and that's done by holding this button here, the lock button, and this button at the top here down at the same time, and it turns the screen on. Do it again. The alarm system's main controller also has a temperature sensor built into it, so when you lock and unlock the car, using the pager remote, it will display the temperature on the screen for you as well. As you can see, it says 28 degrees Celsius. Okay guys, I think that has covered most of the important features of the Spy Car Alarm System. Apart from the remote start, of course, which I decided not to install, at this stage anyway. However, if you would like to see a video of how to install and set up the remote start feature of the Spy Car Alarm System, then let me know in the comment section below. If I get enough requests, I will make a video on how to do that. If you are trying to install or you're thinking of buying one of these Spy Car Alarm Systems yourself, but have questions, then ask in the comment section below and I will try my best to help you. This system does also have a lot of other features that other car alarms also have, which I have not shown in this video. And these are features such as reminding you to close your door if you have not closed it or it's still slightly ajar. It also has an optional automatic window closing feature, uh, which most cars have from factory these days anyway. This car does have that. Um, it also has silent arming, which I currently have enabled so it doesn't annoy the neighbours trying to make this video. Um, it also has an extra uh, connector port on the main controller board that you can plug in a micro sensor for, so that's just plug and play. And there's a few more other basic features. But for this video, I just wanted to concentrate on the main important features of this system. Okay guys, this brings us to the end of another video. If you liked or found this video helpful in any way, please like, share and subscribe to the channel for more. I upload new videos every week. So until then, I hope to see you all in the next video.